welcome back to PowerPoint Training Online. Today, we're going to be talking about how to use Zoom. Zoom is a new feature in PowerPoint 2016. As long as you are a member of the Office 365, you will get this update to your PowerPoint. As long as you're running the most, as long as you're always running the most up-to-date version of PowerPoint. Now, please bear in mind that some businesses who are running Office 2016 may take may take a while for the update to come down, depending if it goes through your IT department or not. Okay, so please bear that in mind. This feature is not available in other versions of PowerPoint as of yet, so this is a new feature for PowerPoint 2016. Recently, we published an article talking about why we should be using dynamic content or why we should be creating dynamic presentations. And the whole idea was is that conversations details are not linear. So that they don't go A, B, C, D, E, and F. They can go A to D, to back to C, maybe then up to G or H. So we need to make sure that our presentations can handle those dynamic conversations. No more do we need to create linear, boring straightforward stick to the point presentations okay this now has been a feature in other in other software so for instance like a, a powtoon prezi they've been able to do this for quite a while now so microsoft are a little bit slow in introducing this feature but they finally have and it's great it makes life so much easier for everybody like i said we can now create dynamic presentations so let's get started on using, on using zoom before I start going to show you how to set it up and how to use Zoom, I want to show you exactly what it does. Okay, so I'm here, I've got Zoom, I've got my presentation open, I've created a few slides. Now, if I wanted to go into presentation mode, I press F5 as usual, and I will go. Now, so I've got my first slide here open, which I was talking at the time, I was writing a presentation on troubleshooting flow and how to troubleshoot a mobile device. Okay, what I wanted to do is I wanted to be a case of I could go down a certain routes. So for instance, my first four options here was stage one is software reset, software update, app updates and storage, okay? The next option I wanted to choose, I wanted to leave to the audience to choose. So there was two issues. There was known app issue and an unknown app issue. Okay. Let's say I want to I want to go on to unknown app issue first. You can now see my header. I'm now on the unknown app issue page. If I go back and now I get to choose known app issue. So I can choose which way I wanna go with this. I don't need to go a linear presentation. I can take my conversation and my presentation and my talk along with the audience. So that is what Zoom does in a nutshell. Now let's have a look at how we use it. Really could not be more straightforward. It is just a case of splitting your content into sections as I've done here you can see I've got sort of my, my default section which is my first few slides I've then got another known app issue section I've got unknown app issue section etc so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new section a new slide here so just uh, da -da -da, test one change up the black so it matches everything else Now, I want to go to, let's change Peter. So again, change that to black. And what I'm going to do is I want to insert a picture there about Peter Rabbit. This picture will then allow me to So I'm going to insert uh, an image of Peter Rabbit here. It's just something oh, we can work with design ideas while we're here as well. So that created a new page for me. Got Peter Rabbit in my picture. So let's say I had my table of contents. Now instead of having a table of contents in, in Word imagery, what I can do is I can now go to Zoom, so go to Insert, click on Zoom, click on Slide Zoom. I can now click on my Peter Rabbit slide and then press Insert. So 
nav, what I can do is I can have my header pages. So now, when I go into presentation view, if I click on Peter Rabbit's image, it will bring me to that slide. I can have create dynamic content. So I'm gonna add in an image of a pig, no, for any, no reason in particular. Again, let's just put it in there. Popper the pig. So, create a new slide. Looks very similar to our Peter Rabbit one, okay? So now what we wanna do is we wanna go back to table of contents, and if I put in, go back to zoom. So what I wanna do now is go back to our table of contents. We're gonna insert another zoom slide. So if I go to insert, zoom, slide zoom, select my popper pig, insert. So now I've got two, two slides in my table of contents. If I go to presentation view, I can press one of them and it'll bring me to that slide. Doesn't make a difference what order they're in, it will go straight to that. So, what if you want to add in more sections? So let's say I had another slide here that was about Peter Rabbit. And then let me just put some placeholder text in there. So let's, and then we have another slide below the pop of the pig. We're gonna have a new slide about pop of the pig. Change that to black. Again, put my text in there. So now I've got four slides in here after my table of contents. Peter Rabbit, and I've got pop of the pig. So I've clicked on my table of contents. This brings me, if I then go into presentation view, I click on pop of the pig, press next, brings me to the about page, press next, brings me to the end of presentation, okay? Not what I want, because we've missed the about Peter Rabbit page now. So what we want to do, go back to our table of contents, I'm going to delete these slide summary zooms, slide zooms, and I'm going to insert a section zoom, okay? But for this, you need to create new sections. So if I add a section in here, and I type rename that to Peter Rabbit and then put a new section right before the pop of the pig slide and name that Popper the Pig. So now I've got my two sections, go back to my table of content and if I go back to insert, zoom, section zoom. Now this time it's showing me all my sections, not my individual slides, it's showing me my sections. So this time if I click on section five, Peter Rabbit, and press insert, again, the image is, a, is the same. It brings me the first slide from, from that section. And I wanna add in the section for Pop of the Pig. So I press insert now. So now we've got two sections in our table of contents. So if I go back to presentation view, click on Peter Rabbit, it will bring me to the Peter Rabbit first slide and then bring me to the second. Then it brings you back. So if I had more here, I could then choose a different option again. So if I click pop of the pig this time, again, brings me back. And this time, when I've gone to the next page after I've done through all of them, it doesn't bring me back to any of the other slides I've been to, it just brings me to the end, which is what we want. We don't want to be going, going to pop the pig, then going back to doing Peter Rabbit, then going to go through it all again to get to the end. It skips the sections we've already done. It knows where we've been, it knows where we want to go, and it takes us there. There's one thing left which I need to show you in relation to using Zoom, and that's using Summary Zoom. Summary Zoom, Zoom will create a table of contents for you without you actually having to do it. So it will take the first slide from every single section and then it will put it all into one slice and you can then work from your table of contents when you're delivering your presentation. So if I go back to insert and go up to Zoom, you'll see Summary Zoom. Click on Summary Zoom and it's now highlighted all of the set first slides from all the sections. So I've got five in total. If I press insert, in comes my slide. I just change title to contents 
and then I've now gone into presentation view and I've got all my sections there ready to go. And when I go back and forth, I can then go through all of my sections in a dynamic way. I don't need to go linear. I don't need to stick to the same routine. I can work with the audience. I can go way the audience is going. Now, there's one more thing I wanted to tell you about, and that's changing the image. So I, I've liked, I like these images the way they are. I like the way the slide has been laid out. But let's say you didn't want to do that. Say I didn't want this Peter Rabbit one here, okay? I just wanted the About Peter Rabbit section. So if I go back now here, it's shown me the About Peter Rabbit section, and it looks pretty boring. It looks like a slide, and if I want it to look, if I right click, it gives me the option to change image. I can then choose for an image from a file, online pictures, from icons that are already on in PowerPoint. If I go, to, if I go and then go down to my picture that I downloaded, so if I now click on Peter Rabbit, insert, it's changed that image to a different image. Folks, that's really all you need to know on how to use Zoom. Really basic, really simple, and allows you to create dynamic content. Is there anything else you'd like to see? Please let us know in the comments. We are always there. Or you know, to hit, reach us out on Facebook or Twitter. Again, we want to create content for you. We want to give you the tutorials that you want. So let us know what you want. Have a good day. Bye, guys. Thank you for watching our latest video on PowerPoint Training Online. If you liked it, don't, hit, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. And also subscribe for all the latest updates from PowerPoint Training Online.